Warning, this podcast contains explicit sexual language and should only be listened to at work if you're looking for an excuse to connect with your HR representative. Additionally, all mentions of the word women include cis, trans, NB, gender queer, gender fluid, and those still figuring it out. Yes, you. You are welcome here. Will you open up with me? These pages they can feed your innermost desires. Do you feel inspired? Are you getting what you need? Are you coming curiously? A secret safe with me. And here you can simply be yourself. Hi, y'all. This is Jace, and you found Jace Reads Romance, a community empowering women about sex and sexuality through the reading of romance novels. What an exciting episode I've got for you today. I have an incredible guest with her own podcast, Princess Rara from Pink Kink, joining me. And I will let Her Highness, introduce herself (laughs) as she wishes. So, Rara, tell our listeners, if they have not yet listened to Pink Kink, who you are and why I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, Well, hello, I'm Princess Rara of Pink Kink Podcast, which is all about the pretty twisted side of kink. (laughs) And we talk about it that way because I, I like pretty. I am a princess. My favorite color is pink, and I feel things can be both pretty and owie at the same time. And so that's what we talk about on the podcast. I'm also a community leader in kink. I host my own munch. I have, my basement has been converted to a dungeon, so I host parties. I teach kink at conventions. And on top of all that, I am an avid romance reader. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness. For listeners who might not know what a munch is, what is a munch? A munch is a social gathering of people who are into kink, but we don't kink at these gatherings. The purpose is, it's as we call them vanilla, and it's a a vanilla gathering. So it could be at a restaurant, at a bar, at a bowling alley, at a movie. And the only expectation is to come and meet people. We're not going to do anything sexual. We're not going to do any type of kink activities. We're just going to get to know each other in a place where there's zero pressure. Amazing. And I am sure that that word is going to come up later in our conversation. So (laughs) keep it in y'all's brains. Okay. So what a resume. I'm so excited to just when you hear that, that is a person that I want to get to know. But there is an origin story that I really would love for you to share (laughs) with our listeners that has to do with romance novels. So first, tell us what your relationship with romance novels has been. And before the, you know, the moment of change, what would you have described yourself as? Well, I've been reading romance novels since I was probably 13, and I'm a lot older than that now, so please don't make me do the math, but it's a very long time. I used to steal my mom's bodice rippers with Fabio on the cover, and I would inhale these books. And I thought nothing of the fact that I'm reading about men and women having sex Everybody's losing their virginity because, of course, they always start as virgins in the bodice rippers. And that was was. just normal to me. I didn't think twice about it. And I read them for years in secret because, you know, this was back in the day where you didn't tell anybody you were reading romance. They looked down at you. They weren't well Mm -hmm. thought of. And so I would just secretly read all these. And that never stopped. I went through a period where I was like, I'm going to be a serious reader now. So I will read (laughs) only mysteries. 
And I just enjoy it as much. I mean, not that they're not well written. I read some great mysteries, but they didn't speak to me like the romance did. So I got back into romance. And then Kindles came out. Hallelujah <laughs> for the Kindle. So I could start reading my romances everywhere and nobody had to know what I was reading. Mm-hmm. I feel like Kindles were like a huge deal for so many romance readers. Like yeah. life changed when Kindles came around. Absolutely. And then I was at work and one of my coworkers is like, oh my God, you've got to read this book. Everybody's talking about this book. You have to read it. Mm-hmm. And I think we all know which book we're, <laughs> I'm talking about here. And I understand Always. it's kind of a running joke to beep this. And I want to give Michael something to do. So I am going to say the name. And that is amazing. <laughs> and to give it its due, you can't have a conversation about romance and especially kink coming into the light of most of society without talking about it. So thank you. <laughs> well, and it's. <laughs> It it did something for kink, but it also completely changed the romance novel industry Mm -hmm. as far as self-publishing. All of a sudden, all these women who probably had never really read romance before were now reading romance. And most importantly, everybody was talking about the fact that they're reading romance. Yeah. And instead of us having to hide and pretend that's not what we read, we could finally admit it freely. This is what I read. So for so many different reasons, and please, I'm not saying by any means this was quality writing. Okay. I (laughs) I will put that there. I'm not saying it was, but for so many reasons, a lot of us have a lot to be grateful for in Mm -hmm. regard to that book. Yeah. I, you know, I, it was not my first book that I read in the kink world, but when that book came out, There were a lot of people in my life who said, okay, I get kind of what you've been reading in a different way. Like it was, there was less judgment on the books that I had been reading that had kink in them because suddenly kink was just out there for everyone. So at at this moment, at this juncture, before reading, enjoy this, Michael. (laughs) <laughs> be the first time I've said it. What would you have identified as in your in your sexuality and in your sex life? I was always very submissive. I've always been attracted to a take charge kind of a guy. My natural personality is very take charge. And to have somebody, and this is why the kink really appealed to me, to have somebody who could take over and give me a break. Mm -hmm. and be in charge was very appealing. And to have somebody who wanted me so badly that they would throw me on the bed and ravish me, that sounded good. I can't argue with that. (laughs) That sounds great. But um, so when I read the book, I was like, wow, (laughs) this is really turning me on. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I like this book a lot. it and my um, Hitachi wand got a lot of use. Yeah, we got to do a whole episode on like Hitachi wands and the, the life changing magic. Right. Right. So um, that's what I, that was what first grabbed my attention. So at that point, I mean, I wasn't young when I read it. So I wasn't one of those young nubile women who thought this was reality. (laughs) I was actually, I was actually 50. I was 50 when I, well, no, I was like 48 when I read it. And I've been around the block. I was on my second marriage. So I knew the reality of life. (laughs) And I said, I got to find out more about this lifestyle. But I continued to read more romance novels that were about BDSM Mm -hmm. specifically. And always a marketer. I found a website that did book reviews. And I reached out and they were looking for a reviewer. And so I reached out to them. I said, hey, I have a writing background. I love reading. Could I review for you? They said, sure. 
And I said, where did the books come from? They said, well, you can go out and get any books that you want and reach out to the authors you want to read, but uh, sold. So I just started compiling a list of authors who wrote these kind of books and said, hey, can I review your books? And I just kept getting more and more books and then started to become friends with them. Amazing. And this, and this is really what changed everything because I became friends with several of them who are actually in the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I went to a book convention in April of 2015 and went out for dinner with an author named Angel Payne because I give her all the credit in the world. And she actually lives the lifestyle. And she said, if this is something you're really interested in learning about, you've got to join FetLife. Yep. And for those who don't know, FetLife advertises itself as kinky Facebook. <laughs> yes, it's it literally does. what they call themselves. Yes. Um, and I came home from the conference and I took like a week to think about it, talk to my husband, who was not interested in the lifestyle. With his permission, I joined FetLife and the rest, as they say, is history. Incredible. Um, oh, man. FetLife is one of those sites where I feel like you get, you get the best and like Facebook, like any social media site. And I want to caveat this. FetLife or any social media where we could, if we're talking about kink talk, if we're talking about Facebook, if we're talking about Instagram, there are some incredible people and incredible resources on FetLife. And so if you are thinking about it, join you can find princess rara i believe still on fet life i or, i'm very public very public and very public make sure that you get the resources that are worth your time um but if you're interested in kink that is a good resource i i found to introduce you to the huge huge world that kink kind of encompasses yeah it's a good place to find local events classes both in-person and online classes. And that's what you want to use it for. It is not a dating site. They make it crystal clear, no matter how much everybody tries to use it as one, it is not a dating site. And I don't recommend using it as one. Use it to find munches, use it to find classes, conventions. And then when you go to those things, you'll meet people. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've gone to FetLife and my guess is, based on that recommendation, is you started to meet people and go to classes and go to munches. And how did your, how did it change from the expectation you had from the books you were reading into real life? Because we know that books, as accurate as they try to be, they're still fantasy and there's still discrepancies between the real world and what's on a page because what's on a page has got to be sexy enough to keep reading. Yeah. What was the biggest thing that you learned when you took that knowledge or that expectation from fiction into reality? I think for me, the biggest thing that was sort of like my wow moment was the fact that you can have a thriving kink life that does not involve sex at all. That platonic kink is a thing. It's a can, big thing. Can you say like a little bit louder for those yeah. in the back? Yeah, <laughs> platonic kink is a real, amazing, wonderful thing. In fact, my kink is all platonic. I have a partner that I have sex with. We don't do kink together. My kink and my, and my sex lives are separate. Thank you. I, I think that's such an important distinction to make. So often, especially in books, because books, books want to be sexy, you have to be very intentional to find books with kink that don't revolve around sex. And that can be a surprising joyful or disappointing reality when you move into the kink community so thank you and y'all if you're interested in kink and you don't associate it with sex there's nothing wrong with you you can want impact without sex you can want uh sensation play you can want dns you can like want so many things in the kink community under that umbrella that have nothing to do with nothing to do with sex I mean, even in the books where 
friends do kink together, they somehow still have sex. Like some of my favorite <laughs> authors will write about a group of friends and you've still got your, your main female and your main male character mm-hmm. that will end up together at the end. But they'll do, they'll do kink with other people at the dungeon. And even if there's not a full out sex, somehow the scene will end with the woman having an orgasm. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessary. No, it's not. It's, there are so, kink provides so many things. And some of those, th- most of those things are not orgasms and not yeah. sex. And that is something that I think if you're interested in the kink community to really embrace, to to allow yourself to enjoy kink without sex and also to understand that not all kink involves sex if you're looking for the community you can't expect sex with your kink all the time as we say kink is going to turn you on but it doesn't mean it has to turn you on physically it can turn you on mentally it can turn you on emotionally absolutely I love that so before we move Before we really move forward, I would love to hear, besides Angel, what are some of the books that you found most helpful in that introduction? Or maybe not wasn't an introduction. Maybe you dove head first. Head head first. (laughs) I I dove head first into the deep end. Yes. Into the deep end. What were some of those books, those series, those authors that really allowed you to mentally, while you were reading, explore this this thing that you discovered or that you found yourself wanting. Anne Mayburn was another one who I had both the pleasure of meeting and reading her books. She had some amazing books. I think one of the first ones I read of hers was called like Ivan Submissive because you got to love a Russian mafia guy. And um, Calypso Masters, I read all of her books and I got to meet her too because I'm big on meeting these people who've like impacted my life. I'd like to tell them. So they keep writing. And um, Cherise Sinclair, who I have not yet had the honor of meeting, but I've, I've talked to her and she's, she's very lovely. So I would say those are, those are my beginning stages of introduction to kink books. Yep. And I loved all of their stuff. Amazing. I will make sure all of these authors are in the show notes for you all y'all. Okay. So you are, You've read these books, you've got joined Fat Life, you've joined a munch, you've started to to explore kink in real life. How did you view those books that you read with this new lens? Okay, now that I'm doing this thing in my real life, what do I think of the books that I read? And how did it change the books that you sought out afterwards? Actually, what's very interesting is I found it much harder to read the books Mm -hmm. because they were so different than the reality that I was living. And I didn't give up romance by any means. I just switched and it wasn't so much BDSM romance that I was reading. I got into the mafia romance and into um, shifter romance. And of course, contemporary and different things like that. But I kind of just found it really hard to keep reading where I'm like yelling at the books going, (laughs) no, it isn't. That's that's not how any of this works. Mm -hmm. And I got really lucky. I happened to, somebody reached out to me and said, hey, we follow you on TikTok and on Instagram. And I'm working with, and this was, I think it was Ashley Michelle who reached out to me. She goes, I'm working with an author named Nikki Rome, who is putting together a conference called Smut Lovers. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of this is to educate writers of smut on how to take their BDSM kink romance and make it more realistic. And I said, sign me up. What do you need me to teach? I'm there. I, I am all yours. And I went to the convention September of 2023. I'm already signed up for September 2024 and September 2025. I'm already signed up for 2024. I will see you there. Yes. I'll see you there. And Nikki had the same passion and vision that I had about we could still give readers the romance and the fantasy, but keep the kink 
more realistic. And by that, look, th there's still going to be sex involved. I accept that these are romance novels, right? Yeah. There's still going to be these dungeons that are exquisitely decorated and with these huge bars and staff members who do all this stuff for you, none of which is what happens in real life. <laughs> and that's fine. But when they talk about knife play, they're actually talking about knife play and not something that we call cutting. Mm -hmm. When they're talking about flogging, they're actually using a flogger and not a single tail whip, which is a different thing than a flogger. Different, right? like y'all. All the stuff that mm -hmm. we talk about. Um, so one of my favorite kinks is I'm very much into blood play. I like my kinks extreme. So I did a presentation on blood play, but I did it different than if I were to teach it to kinksters, mm -hmm. right? To kinksters, I'm going to teach you how to do it. For writers, I gave them ideas of ways to write it and scenes to include and gave them just enough of the technical information so that when they're writing it out, it matches. They're showing that, that, the, that the characters are using blood pathogen safety procedures. So different things like that. Um, and I, I did a, a presentation on dungeons where I talked a little bit about what the reality is versus mm -hmm. the fantasy with the understanding that, yes, some of the fantasy is going to need to stay. But yeah. I would love to see more consent discussions, more negotiations. Um, if you happen to read Cherise Sinclair, she rewrote her author's note that Ooh. goes in the front of every book. And this new author's note, I reached out to her to tell her it was fantastic. This new author's note talks specifically about reality versus fantasy and the whole issue of consent. Mm -hmm. And she nailed it. She just nailed it. It's slowly coming. I was reading a book today. Um, I love daddy romance. <laughs> and so I'm, re I'm reading a book from Rawhide Ranch. And there's a scene where they discuss safe words. And like the author nailed it. And th this is the stuff that yes. makes my heart happy. Yes. I have, I am so, oh my goodness. I think that there is so much to be said for how we communicate in our romance novels in general. And especially around kink where so much discussion happens before or after and y'all if this is if you're like I want to know all about the discussion go find Pink Kink they have an entire entire episode about negotiations and like if you're looking to really delve into your kink knowledge please go start there they start with the definitions episode which if you know me I love a definition love love a good let's get on the same page and <laughs> So often I think that maybe authors don't realize, and especially if they're not in a lifestyle, there's less lead up. In the episode earlier, listeners, with Courtney Abbott, we talked about how when she's choreographing an intimate scene on stage, it's not, and they kissed, lips connect. There is a build up and then at the end, there's a taper off. And I think sometimes in r romance novels, that buildup isn't considered enough. And that buildup can be part of a negotiation. If it's a scene and there's sex, if if there's like a kink scene and there's sex, there's negotiation. And that can be part of the ramp up. Your partner telling you what they want, what they don't know, what you're excited to do, what you're not excited to do. And to include these moments of consent, of connection can be so powerful. And for me, I think really sexy. I don't know for you, Rara, like the conversations that you have around kink when you're preparing to scene or preparing to play, like those are just as fun sometimes. That can be like mental mm -hmm. foreplay. And I, exactly. I, I love that. And I want to see more. And I love that you're part of it and you're seeing this trend of adding in those negotiations, those conversations into the romance. Because if you don't, then you have a moment when you're like, oh, he just kissed her like out of the blue and then stuck his hands up her skirt. And like, I guess it's okay because she liked it. But was it really okay? Like, 
Was it really okay? Like you can't give consent after the fact. Right. I, I feel authors have a responsibility because I am so not the only woman who has read kink romance and then wanted to go and do it. Nope. And I belong to a lot of different Facebook groups for books. And I read constantly posts from, from women, predominantly, though the occasional man, who will come in and say, I read this book. I'm going to try to do this with my husband or my boyfriend or my partner. Right? Yep. And so there's a responsibility for that. And I love that all of these people involved within Smut Lovers believe in that. Because I ran into a situation, I was arc reading a book. And I reached out to the author privately because I, if I'm going to give you a bad review, I want to talk to you first. I don't want to just surprise you. That's so, so I reached nice. out to her and I said, look, I, I'm reaching out to you because I actually am a kink educator. And I got to tell you, there's some issues with this, this, and this, that. And this author was like, you know, this is fiction. <sighs> and was super offended. Like, and actually said, you can't expect me. It's like, actually, I can. Yes. And, and that really bothered me because if you think as an author that people are not going to read these books and try it at home, mm -hmm. you are so wrong. Yes. This is a conversation that we're having that I find myself having a lot is, all right, y'all, these are books that I'm being encouraged to read, that I'm seeing a lot of engagement with. And we need to have a pause. Is this your spank bank or is this your how to document? Because those two are very different things. And one is fine if you want to use this as your spank bank or maybe like recreate it in a role play scene with you and a partner. Like, OK, great. You can be X and I can be Y. But if you think that this is how it's you're supposed to practice anything like this. Mm -hmm. You are going to come up against a lot, a lot, and it is not going to go the way that you expect it. And no. I think authors do have a responsibility to, at the very least, put in an author's note that says, hey, this is fiction or fantasy, and this is okay or not okay, and this is, I intend for this to be used as such. Do not go home and recreate this. Right. We, I mean, we have trigger warnings, like in the dark romance, they very specifically go through all these trigger warnings and they tell you, you know, don't try this at home. All of that. It should be within this, within the non-dark ones. Yes. I think within the non-dark, this is something that I, I'm, as someone who reads, because I assume you don't just read dark and you don't just read kink, you read romance of all shapes and sizes and you talk to romance readers of all preferences I found that the people who are not changing fast are the people in the more typical vanilla world that cis het man woman like penetration sex they're less willing to have the conversations about accuracy about consent than people who are really diving into things that might trigger. I'm not saying all of them, but I found more and more the the turn happens with people who are hopefully doing research and hopefully doing things than that typical like, oh, and then the man just grabbed her and made out with her viciously and threw her on the bed and didn't even ask if he could go down on her, just ripped off all of her clothes and like, never had a conversation about it where hope I'm finding that not always but more of my dark or kink or less vanilla books are mm -hmm. willing to engage in those conversations I don't know agree agree agree, agree. all right so things in romance novels as someone who practices kink what are the things that you do look for in a romance novel, whether it's kinky, whether it's not? What do you want to see in that kind of really in a relationship? I definitely would love to see full discussions about boundaries and limits. 
mm-hmm. a discussion around consent and safe words. Um, you know, there's this whole idea about pushing a submissive past their limits. And I'm all for that to an extent, but it still has to be a discussion where they sit down and go, okay, I know you would like to get to using a single tail. Mm -hmm. So instead of now pushing you by using a single tail on day one, we're going to get there by these steps. What do you think about that? How do you feel? Does this work for you? And get consent to do that. Um, It's, I have a friend whose running joke is she'd like to see more lube in the nightstand. Yes. Because, because no, somehow nobody ever needs to use lube. Even when they have anal, ever. they don't need to use lube. Never. And that's it for today, y'all. This has been a Three Paws Productions podcast. You can find Jace and so much more at jacereadsromance.com. That's J-A-Y-C-E readsromance.com. Follow along on TikTok and Instagram at jacereadsromance. And if you'd like to send an email, our email address is jace at jacereadsromance.com. To leave a voicemail with a question or testimonial for a future episode, call and leave a message at 661-JACE-RR. That's 661-529-2377. And finally, like and subscribe so you can get every episode when they drop. And remember, this is Chase, holding space for you. 